Hello, 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 kings and queens and captains of industry. How y'all doing today? Nada, I see you. Kerry. Hey, hey, Kelly, I see you hiding over there. All right. Hear me, give me a thumbs up. Go in your chat. Man, that looked like I got Danielle in the house, man. I got Danielle in the house. For real, for real. All right, Maya. Mia. I'm sorry, Lou. All right, all right. Kelly, all the way from Arizona. All right, y'all mute as y'all come in. Hello, everybody. Hey, LaVonda. LaVonda, sign up today. Patrick Dolan, join the meeting. All right, Melanie from Texas. Y'all, come on, let me know y'all here. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know, let me know. Hello, hello, hello. There you go. Let me see them thumbs coming up. Let me see them thumbs coming up. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, Audrea. Wait, John, where my boy at? Phil, the coach in the house. John's on his way upstairs right now. Okay. Always late. <laughs> hey, Sinasia. You keep on talking about let's get together and won't ever get back with me. Anitra in the house. All right, y'all. Let me know y'all here. Let me know y'all here. We filling up. I'm finna start in a minute. I messed around and and made the mistake of sending out an old text that stated we want to start at one o'clock. How many of y'all got that? How many of y'all smart enough to know that I'm the dumbest one in the room? How many of y'all know that? That I am not good with this social media stuff. They make me look good. Why am I muted? Okay, unmute me now. All right, Shar, give me the screen back. I got the screen. I got control of the screen. There go my man, Solomon. There we go. Antoine in the house. Let me get a thumbs up for everybody that's here. Hello, hello. As you come in, please, I need you to mute your phone. I got a whole lot of kings and queens on this thing. And we all cannot talk together. All right, Carrie, there we go, Carrie. Carrie, you're kind of late with that thumb, you know. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Coming in, coming in. All right, everybody's coming in. I'm, I'm going to give it a couple of more minutes. We'll give it a couple more minutes and then we're going to kick this party off. Okay. Mute as you come in, please. Please mute yourself as you come in. All right. Beverly, Beverly, I ain't heard from you in a minute. Hey, Pal Keith, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Give me a thumbs up in the in the chat box. Okay. Uh, do I have Johnny Mixon? Constance, you here? Give me a thumbs up, Constance. Antonio, what's up, teacher? Teacher of the year. All right, there we go. Johnny, you here. Okay. 
Good, good, good. Come on, y'all. Y'all come on in. We're filling up the room. I got 50 slots. It's 44 of y'all here. Rachel in the house and somebody is not mute their phone. Please mute your phone. Okay, thank you. Because y'all mess around. Say something might, might be so embarrassing. I might have to close my ears. Thank you. All right. I don't want to hear poo poo barking and Ray Ray cussing and Shaniqua fighting. Not today. All right, everybody coming in. I got some exciting stuff that I want to share with y'all today. I am so excited about where we're going now. And just to give you guys um, a humbled, humbled apology, um, I sent out a text earlier today that stated that we were going to start at nine, and that's not accurate. It was an old text we that I that I created, and I didn't edit it. You know, and um, I know some people are literally going by that literally, even though they got text earlier. Right. Um, and then some people are not even getting a text. I got to try to figure this out. But I want to, uh, first of all, talk about what we're going to talk about today. Now, uh, we are probably two weeks in the hole because I do this at the end of every month, not the beginning of the month. And uh, we had some conflict in schedule. So, Shara, can I have my screen back? Can I uh, control this screen? Yes, sir. You can share your screen. Okay, I can share my screen now? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Cool in the game. All right, so um, let me see one second here. Give me one second. One moment in time. Um, just kind of recap. We did some great stuff in 2022, and we're 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 launching 2023. And uh, I made a declaration that we were going to take a couple of people to that um, million dollar status, that million dollar level, and we I got half of them on the way. Got a couple of them online right now. And so we're going to jump right into this. Uh, let me kind of open this up a bit. Um, and that being said, let's see something here. Uh, okay. So, uh, bear with me here. Who we got here? Who's this beautiful woman right here? Journey, get out of here. Where you been? Oh, Hi. my. Hi. Hi. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wow, man, I just thought y'all just gave up on the brother. No, we did not. We came to a rut, but I can't give up on this. So I'm always up to par with your emails and stuff, but no. Okay. <laughs> We're moving to Houston soon, so we have another plan. <laughs> okay, that's even better. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Mm -hmm. So what's going on, my man? Um, success? Can everybody kind of change your name and let me see who your name is? But that's okay. You can keep it like that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. We good. All right. Everybody muted out, right? Okay. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay. We 10 minutes in. I ain't got to. Oh, we passed 50. Okay, good. We up to the number. Magic number. Okay. Somebody just dropped out. I don't know who that was. Okay. All right. All right, I'm gonna show you guys this screen right here before I even get started. 
one of our biggest pain points, you all, was trying to get property, trying to get capital in order to get your business started. Now, prior to me doing this, I started this way back in 2017. Uh, 2018, I went full time. But when I started this, it was much easier to, to acquire property. Now, uh, since the pandemic, there's been a shortage in properties. There's a couple of people on here. Nada just got her property up and going. Uh, Nada, I got to link you up with, uh, come off of mute real quick. Come off mute real quick. Talk to me. There we go. Hey, Keith. How you doing, Nada? We're doing good. Thank you. Tell it, share with everybody uh, your journey right now. Where you at? Where we're at right now is we're waiting for our, um, when they come do the inspection. Mm -hmm. When they come do the inspection. Uh, we have our house in Baltimore. It's uh, furnished. And it, we're all just about ready to go. We're just waiting for the inspection. Tell everybody the name of your program. It is Sundari Transitional Support. Sundari, S-U-N-D-A-R-I. And we're located in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, the section is called Rosemont. And how many bedrooms you have? It's three bedrooms. Okay. So you can fit how many people? Six? Uh, no, we actually fit five. If we put if we put six, it'll be too tight in one room. But gotcha. we have five. Five, five okay. you know, comfortable. Five comfortable with lots of space in between. Did I did I connect you with Nadi Nada? Uh, I'm sorry, with, with uh I'm calling your name. Monica. Did you I told us her, you told us her name. My daughter actually, um, when we were doing our drive-through through the city, we came across a property and my daughter looked it up and it belonged to her. It belonged to you. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was a big, beautiful property. She yeah. had it for a long time, but she um and, and I said, Oh, that's the guy that Keith uh wanted me to talk to. Her the property was owned by Misa House. That's it. Meet your house. And that's, that's I said, Aria, that's the guy, that's the lady who Keith uh, recommended us to speak with. I need but, you to get with her though, because she's she's a wealth of knowledge. She know where all the dead bodies are buried up there in Baltimore. Okay, okay. She, she got okay. major connections. So that I, that's what I wanted to share with you, okay? Yes, yes. When are you coming right. through? You said you're coming through Baltimore soon. All you gotta do is just get me up there and I'm coming. Okay. All righty. You know, I'm coming, man. I'm I'm one of them uncles that are that'll show up, you know, at every barbecue. Wow. Okay. Well, look, uh, I wish I had showed you guys pictures. It's beautiful. It is. I saw it on Facebook. I, I oh, thought did you see was, one of our rooms? Oh, yeah. Oh, we yeah, I and yeah. I put all out. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Okay. Um, I got Johnny Mixon here. We're gonna do a couple testimonials. Johnny Mixon, where you at, Johnny? Where you Brother at? Keith. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I can't see you, but I can hear you. There you go. All right. All right. Johnny, uh, where you at? Where you located? Uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And what's the name of your program? Uh, Culture Life Supportive Services. And how many bedrooms you got? Um, well, how many beds, beds you got? How many beds? Uh, 18 and have another six uh, in two weeks. Another six in two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> and I got the text you sent. Share your story, man. Tell us a little bit. Of, tell everybody a little bit about where you're at right now in the journey. Um, right now, I got connected with the... Uh, what we got here is like a mental health court. Drug Your court. phone broke, breaking up bad. Um, I got in contact with like the mental health court and drug courts. And um, I got connected with them and the people is the, the people is endless that they seen. It's I don't have enough space. 
Y'all sleeping on y'all tell me I don't want to do mental health. I don't want to do mental health. I don't, I don't. Listen, that was my bread and butter. Yeah, I don't. So, I don't have so, enough space. So who paying the rent? The state. Come on. The Join who? the meeting. State. The state paying the rent. Now, how you got connected with that? Wait a minute. Y'all taking notes on this? Can y'all hear this? The state is paying the rent. Now, tell us a little bit about how you how you got hooked up with that. Well, here we got to get certified through OCAR, which stands for Oklahoma Alliance of Recovery Residents. So uh-huh. we got to go through a certification process. Now, and who hooked you, you up with the guy? Who hooked you up with the guy? Elder Key. <laughs> <laughs> The other key. All right. So we went through the certification process, and that opened up the floodgates for me. Once you got certified, the floodgate opened. It's wide open, and it won't stop. I, I got. I just checked somebody in twenty minutes before I got along with y'all. Wow. Now you sent me a text. Tell me, read that text to me, man. Well, let's see what it says. I can't pull it up right now, but long story I'm, short. Can you I'm pull, it, pull up? it up? I'm gonna pull right. it up. I'm gonna pull this up, man. I, I just I was blown away. And I'm gonna post this. Praises for culture life. One of my staff met a resident of yours yesterday who just couldn't say enough great things about your program. He loves it there. Thanks for all you do. That's that's a that's a major compliment, y'all. That's huge. That so from, obviously you're doing something right. Yeah, that came directly from the um the director of Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse. Direct. Directly her email. Wow, that is amazing. And it normally don't reach all the way up to there. You know what I mean? Because yeah. she got all these people work up under her. Right. Right. So that's a, that's a good thing. As long as you're treating your people good, let me tell you something, man. It permeates through the whole community. When I started pouring into my people, I'm telling you, man, my program blew up out of the water, but I was directly involved. So if you don't want to get involved with your people, you just want that passive income. Like, you know, you got your Airbnb. This is not an Airbnb mentality. Y'all. You know, this is a social work. This is a Mother Teresa with a Jeff Bezos mindset. All right. But you got to be concerned about the very people that you're serving, but you got to have those wraparounds. All right. So I got it kind of got sidetracked on that. But I'm going to share this with y'all because this is what I want to bring to y'all today. Now, today, tonight, 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 we're going to talk about ways that you can get funded, ways that you can get your credit straightened out, ways or the importance of building your business credit along with your personal credit. And I got a couple of people that already got their funding and I'm taking them through that second tier where we're going to get their business credit up to par and they can be able to access revenue or capital that they can expand their business a lot easier and faster. How many know money answers all things? Now, they say money is uh, the root of all evil, but I, I, I beg to differ. It is the root whenever you're doing the wrong, wrong thing with it. But the Bible said it answers all things, okay? So having capital and having money is probably one of the better leveraging point that you could ever use. Now, I'm a part of, I just bought this um, private firm uh, that deals uh, specifically with veteran housing and transitional housing. So I'm going to play this tape out so you guys can hear this pilot program, and perhaps you can even get involved. I don't hide it. I divide it. I share the information that I have. I want you guys to go to that million dollar status. I want you all to have access to capital and opportunities that I have. So I'm not trying to make money off of you, so to speak. I'm trying to get money in your hand. I'm not trying to give you a fish. I'm trying to teach you guys how to fish. The other thing is I'm going to introduce Phil and I'm going to introduce Solomon. Solo, my man Solo. So Solo is my mentor, y'all. That's my mentor. Um, He reached out to me, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but he reached out to me on Instagram. Uh, Nope, he reached out to me on Messenger. Like what I was doing, said somebody dropped my name, and I messed around and looked at his profile, and I'm like, this dude is the answer to my prayers. Boy, let me tell y'all something. I truly believe when a student is ready, the teacher will appear. Woo, that's a, that's a, 
That's a thumb, thumb. That's a snap, snap, snap. There, y'all. Seriously, whenever you believe that, trust me, it shows up in your life when you need it. But when you put frustration and anger and all this stuff into your pathway and into your character, let me tell you what's going to happen is because we co we command things, we are we, we have the characteristic of the creator. That means we creating whether it's good or bad. My thing is I'm always looking for opportunity. My thing is there's another uh, opportunity around the corner for me. That's my mindset. That's my thinking. Therefore, it appears. So this brother reached out to me and I reached back out to him. Before I can even talk to this brother, I went ahead and paid for his course. Woo! And when I did, this man has been taking me on a ride that I'm just blown away with. The totally blown away. So he's going to come in and drop some nuggets today. Then I got my man, Phil. Phil is a part of my team now. Phil is doing training with me, but Phil is a serial entrepreneur. This brother here has done so many different things, very successful. Anything his hand touched turns to gold. And these are the kind of people you want to align yourself with, partner with, network with, and be a part of. So Phil is going to talk about some of the strategies that we're going to use to help you acquire property. But I got something even better, y'all. I signed up with this group. This group is a Christian group, Christian based, but the vision behind this plan, this guy's plan, Dr. Paul, is he wanted to allow churches and nonprofits. We got how many nonprofits we got in the house that are 501c3? I need to see the numbers. Carrie, put your number, everybody put your numbers up. How many nonprofits? 501 C C3 already got your determination letter. I want to put see the numbers. Okay, here's what I want you to do. This this is the key. Wait, wait. Put the number four in there. Put the number four. We're gonna count how many fours we got. Put the number fours. Ooh, good God Almighty, John. Ooh, Antoine. Wow. Wow. Wow, we got so many. Ooh, Daryl Ivory. We got a whole lot of nonprofits already. All right, so let me tell y'all one of the reasons why I tell y'all to do the nonprofit. I make it real simple. Why is it every multimillionaire, every ball player, uh, end up opening up a nonprofit? Why? For tax purposes. But what we gonna do it for is we wanna get houses for $1. We wanna go into the city and take those blighted buildings from off the city's hands and turn them into affordable housing. Now, I want y'all to listen to this. This brother here, he literally um, advised governors, city commissioners, presidents, everything. This brother is deep. He came up with a pilot program, went to HUD. HUD has, has given him these properties and he's sharing these properties with us. I'm gonna let him explain this. Listen at this, y'all. We want 22,000 homes. We'll probably get up to about 50 or 60 and we want exclusive listing. And this is exactly what we want. It's good to what you read that out for everyone for me, please. HUD to approve and provide 2,000 foreclosed HUD homes. This letter is an approval letter. It's not he trying to get them. HUD has already approved him to receive 2,000 HUD foreclosed properties. Mm. These foreclosed properties are all over the country. So that means when you sign up or be a part of our mastermind training, whatever city you in, if you bought, bought this course and then you bought this firm and you, you got an opportunity to literally become like a franchisee with him, PC real estate firm, where you own your own real estate firm under him and it's only $1,000, it's going up to $10,000 in April. So I start to buy one in every city. Then I realized, Hell, I can't manage all of that. <laughs> I say I can't manage. Besides, why would I be greedy? So I'm gonna I'm opening this up to everybody. So it's a pilot hope. So it's helping our people excel, and it's an a veterans at uh, initiative. But it's not just veterans, y'all. It's everybody. 
It's everybody. But anybody that's in position, watch this, and they need housing, if you become the broker, you got access to this HUD house, you can rent that HUD house and receive 90% of that. You receive, listen, so y'all ain't got to find how we can, we can get our own houses through housing and urban development. Listen at this, watch this. PC Real Estate uh, Firm Incorporated, PCREF, a nonprofit 501c3 organization to HUD to grant and approve exclusive listing and leasing of 2000 HUD or close homes to PC um, Real Estate Firm Project Hope for a period of one year with an extension for an additional 12 months. PC Real Estate Firm will list and or lease the provided hood homes. PC Real Estate Firm will market all provided hood homes to the public according to their housing standards, which will be offered to any persons without regard to race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familiar status, national origin, or any other factor protected by federal, state, or local law. These 2,000 HUD homes will be made available for sale and for lease with the option to purchase. The HUD homes will be offered for sale under the financing terms such as FHA, VA, cash, and conventional HUD homes will be offered for lease under the PC real estate firm lease with the option to purchase program. Please refer to section two for details of the lease with the option to purchase program. HUD to approve and provide authority for PC real estate firm to administer vouchers through the housing choice voucher and HUD bash voucher programs. Vouchers will be administered in accordance with HUD's regulation. PC Real Estate Firm will provide supportive services to all clients participating in the lease with the option to purchase. We'll provide supportive services. What do we provide, y'all? Supportive services. Are we in alignment? Is this the, the universe lining up with us? Oh, my God. So Solo, you hear that? Do you hear that, brother? That's good news. That is real, real good news. I was so excited. I couldn't even contain myself if y'all saw my little short video like i really could not contain myself and when i saw the opportunity i jumped at it immediately i'm like i ain't waiting on nothing nobody i'm finna get involved you know why because this is about empowering people and it lines up with something i already did i got the city of oakland park to donate a building, a 32 apartment building to me for $1, y'all. And I sold that property. I got that property for $1. I got uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, and I got the biggest contractor in Day, uh, Brow, Dade and Brown County to partner with me, fix that place up. And all I had to do was write off everything for them. I sold that property for $3.2 million in five years. Y'all don't understand this. Y'all missing it. Y'all got to see the big picture because it's life after halfway house. So when they get out, they need their own apartment. Am I right or wrong? They need their own apartment. They cannot stay with y'all forever. If they did, that means you got to open up a house every, every three months because you're going to have people sleeping on the, on the couch, on the on the floor. So as you, you know, position people out, you transition people out into independent living, that's called supportive housing services. Then I wrapped services around the apartment. It was a gated community. It was in the hood, but it was a gated community, y'all. Let me tell you why I had security at the gate. It was gated. <laughs> it was gated because I had to protect them. I had a security, but I had Hood paying me 70% of their income was going directly to the nonprofit. And they only had to pay 30%, y'all. I ain't telling y'all something, I'm guessing. I'm telling you, this is what's going on right now. However, the person that introduced me to that died. And look who shows back up. 
See, y'all ain't going to get you. Listen, y'all, you ain't going to access these federal dollars without a front runner and a gatekeeper. This is a gatekeeper, y'all. You need somebody that's already in. This brother is already in. I was in the training last week and I, I just couldn't believe it. Man, I got ADD so bad. I got it bad. Seriously. Whew. I can only sit about 30 minutes. Solo had me on the on the line for about an hour and something. If it's good, I can stay. If it ain't, I'm gone. It was so good. His information was so good. And this guy's information was so good. I was on with him for three hours. Oh, yeah. And all voucher holder participants under our project Hope Housing Initiative Program, HUD to approve PC Real Estate Firm as an approved nonprofit under HUD's initiative for a nonprofit program in HUD's uh, FHA program. HUD to grant the eligibility of PC Real Estate Firm for direct sale to nonprofit corporations in HUD's nonprofit program. For your reference, PC Real Estate Firm Incorporated has an approved NAID PCRLST 4006. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have just done, give you a narrative of what we have already proposed to HUD. We got back in touch with the director of um, field work and also policy and procedures today. And what we are doing at this time we had asked them to give us a uh, approval by the first of this month, and I'm quite certain there are some complications there, but what we are doing is moving forward. We can do all these things now because of the approval that we already have received in number 10 that we have just depicted. Now, we are giving these owners this information that we're going out to 2,000 homes, and based on you, our plans are to give out 10, 15, 20 homes, three, four, five million dollars of the home that you follow these mandates. You follow these 10 mandates. Today, Mrs. Gooch, we're going to make sure, and Mrs. Carter, make sure that Mrs. Uh, Val, are you on at this time? That's our administrator. Val, are you on? Um, yes or no. Uh, Val, are you on? All right. Well, with that at in mind, Ms. Carter. And Ms. Gooch want to make sure that they receive that uh, profile, this questions, uh, these things here. I know they got it once before, we send it again. We appreciate that. And what we would like to do is also they will get a copy of this here, which is PC Real Estate Class of 2022. Now, we want this to be sent to them, but they have information. And All right. So I just wanted to give you all just kind of like an overview of it. Uh, man. I am so excited. I'm jacked out of my head. Um, this is something that I know will benefit the group, will benefit everybody that's a part of the Mastermind training. And Shara, I want you to take over real quick and give me my, uh, my PowerPoint, please. Let me stop share for a minute and allow you to do that. Um, Shara, where are you? You know what? Don't, Excuse don't. Me. No, that's okay. Oh. Silence. Come off, come okay. off me for a second. Shara. That's okay. Solomon, I'm going to introduce Solomon uh, Lacey to y'all. Uh, Solomon is a another serial entrepreneur. This brother here is by far one of the youngest millionaires I know um, that is making some major moves, who don't bossed up, uh, works in his pajamas. Yeah, yeah. Ain't that nice? Ain't that nice, y'all? Uh, the man got bankers i mean presidents of banks and over uh um all the finances financing department on speed dial y'all the man got him on speed dial okay um the man has done some tremendous things in a short period of time and even though you look at his story he still had to go through hell to get where he is and his educational uh of curve has allowed him to teach us. And I love it when somebody is not talking it, but they walking it too. And they're able to share that information with us in a, a format that even a child, a baby could understand. You know how hard it is to understand the, the banking language? Well, this brother breaks it down. 
So Solomon, if you will, take over, and I want you to just give us about 15 minutes uh, of presentation about what you do uh, and share with the group how important it is to have um, uh, financial literacy, you know, how important to learn how to build your credit and leverage it, and also stop using your personal credit and start using your business credit, okay? <laughs> with that being said, Solomon, take on. I appreciate it. I appreciate the introduction, man. I, I'm 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 jacked up on the card too. I'm writing those down as well. I I, I didn't know there was as much going on in the in the in the house as, as we have. So I definitely want to commend each and every one of you. I mean, I think it's a I mean a commendable service. And, and like you said, you know, you commend you mixing Mother Teresa with Jeff Bezos because the mindset is still um, obviously to create create some type of uh, cash flow for your families, but it's also you know, at the end of the day, you got to care about the people that are that you're placing. So I definitely uh, salute salute you guys on that. And um, yeah, you mentioned a lot of my favorite words. Uh, you know, the first one, leverage. Uh, I think that's ultimately uh, where where we are. We all start. Um, we either we either start here or we or we're unleveraged or we, you know we we don't have it. Um, and so many of us, you know, even, even myself, you know, you kind of talked about my story a little bit. Um, my story goes back where I felt like I did everything the right way. And, you know, the right way. Let me kind of clarify. You know, I, I listened to my parents. Um, I went to went to went to got my bachelor's degree. You know, I played football in school, made my dad happy, um, went back to school, got my master's degree, made my mom happy, got into corporate America. And, um, you know, and I just felt like I, I wasn't happy. Um, and, and mainly because, you know, I didn't make more of my you know, my annual salary than I did in my student loans. And it was very, you know, challenging because we don't talk about that, you know, because think about it. When I was 18 years old, they gave me um, $80,000 worth of student loans. Um, but when I graduated as a, you know, 24 year old, when I was interested in business, they wouldn't give me a $10,000 loan. And you see how crazy it is where they, they gave me this because I didn't know what to do with it. But when I, you know, had the, the, the when I was affluent enough to figure out how to use it, um, it was a problem. So, you know, leverage to me is just, you know, taking the advantage where it exists, um, whether it be a group or a person, wherever you can see the upper hand, you know, and this can be achieved through a lot of things that I like to talk about. Um, and one is just, you know, just having a greater knowledge or experience base, kind of like what you get from Brother Keith. I mean, you know, when you get exposed to something that you, well, you like well, a lot of people say, yeah, this is what you, what you don't know. But Unfortunately, that's not true because, you know, some people are a lot of far ahead of the game and they're able to teach you some things and take you some places that you haven't been and really shorten your learning gap. And I think that's one of the biggest leveraging tools is um, individuals. <coughs> you know, a lot of people talk about mentorship and they kind of discredit it. But, um, you know, a mentor is the only person that can get you, you know, two years ahead in, in a matter of uh, two calls. And it's only because they know, like you said, they know where all the bodies are buried. They know where everything's at. Um, and that's kind of where I want to play play my role on the finance side. Um, as far as telling you, I kind of go over four steps. Um, and these four steps are very simple, but, you know, they can be made very, very difficult. And these four steps are optimizing your personal credit, um, building business credit, getting funding, and purchasing passive income. Um, and I'm just kind of kind of touch on each one of these just a little bit. So, and optimizing your personal credit, it means so many things, right? Um, a lot of us, when we, we want to get into the business space and we start hearing about different things, the first thing people tell us is business credit. Go get some business credit or they teach us how to get business or they, you might you might see a YouTube video or something say, hey, let's get business credit without your, without your social. Let's do this. And what, what ends up happening is we end up taking so many shortcuts that we don't even know the right way anymore. Um, and this can this can simply be put by when you're building your personal credit out, the personal credit is the gateway to freedom, right? It's the gateway to freedom. Uh, I, I'll give you I give you an example. I have clients who make hundred thousand dollars a month, right? Hundred thousand dollars a month, and they come for lending, and we take them to the institutions, and they get, you know, I mean, they they get what they get based on their qualifications. So let's say somebody was making hundred thousand dollars a month based on all the lending that they had out, they were only able to borrow hundred thousand. I have people who come in with a 760 credit score, with a 780 credit score, they're able to compete and get just as much lending as them. And it's because we're doing things like, like you guys, we're doing creative financing. I'm not taking, you know, like I, I, I kind of specialize in, you know, I was in the, I was more in the field, like, I'm like on the, on the field side of it. I was never on the coaching side. Um, you know, we were, you know, we were processing apps. We were talking to lenders. We were, um, you know, I was in the bank. 
um, because these were the these were the people that I needed to know. I didn't need to know a lot of individuals. I needed to know a lot of lenders. So when the individuals came to me, I could be a, a solution um, to, to their issues. So um, a lot of that comes through building the personal credit, um, because without the personal credit it's doors that you can't walk through. Um, and if you can't walk through these doors then you can't even get to the business credit, I mean, I've, obviously you want to get to the business credit. Why? Because it doesn't report to the personal credit. But the only way we can get over to the business credit side is by ma maintaining stellar personal credit, making sure we optimize it. I mean, even things like, you know, a lot of people, and, and I'm pretty sure some people have heard of uh, authorized user trade line or, or piggybacking up. These are things that we don't, we don't, we, we're not privy to the information. And, and those of, who, of us who are, um, don't understand how to maintain it even when it's when it's offered. So one of the ways that AU trade lines can help you or individual, like I always like to give an example of, of kids, right? If you had a child who was 18 years old and it was three different parents and one parent gave, you know, told the kid, hey, you know, we're going to give you a secure card and send you off to college. Right. So they sent them off with the right mindset, secure card, you know, use this when you, on your expenses. But also you send it off to an irresponsible child who really didn't have the understanding. Um, and then the second parent, you know, sends off the, the, the child with without the secure card and just say, hey, you know what? You need to be focused on school. You focus on school. And then when you get out, you're going to be ready for the world. Right. So once again, they don't know what they don't know because they're not out of school. So this was the tutelage. And then the parent number three said, well, you know, let me give you a secure card. And because the secure card only has two hundred dollars on it, we're going to add you as authorized user on our credit cards so you can adopt our credit history, but not get out get access to our cash accounts so to the to the institutions to the credit bureaus they see a 10 year old credit card on a, on a kid with the kid you know that's giving them you know the type of buying power i'll give you i'll give you an example um out of all those kids the last kid can leave out at 21 years old and probably have a subpar job you know making 10 15 dollars an hour and be able to afford a vehicle without a cosigner they'll be able to walk into the lenders and you know be able to get that home loan that starter loan that fha loan where the most kids who came out like the one who who, who said hey just focus on school now they focused on school they got a 4.0 they got all these different things but when they got out they didn't have financial literacy because they didn't learn that on a, on that four year journey. Um, it's one of the I feel like that's one of the discredits to uh, to people who go to college as well. I mean, I think it should be taught in high school as well. But I mean, I, I would like to go back as far as middle school. And that's kind of why when I said, um, you know, me getting out of the service space and getting into the serving space, I just felt that I could uh, reach more people as opposed to charging more people for more services. Just like one of the things that uh, me and Keith talked about, uh, uh, about the funding fees. I mean, literally, um, just, you know, kind of like you were saying, um, me being able to charge fees and exorbitant fees has, you know, given me the ability to, uh, you know, finance the lifestyle and, and live a little better. But also, um, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who pays attention to the patterns as well. And I started seeing that people were using me. Um, no way, you know, I'm, I'm getting paid for it, but, but kind of look at it like this. You never want to be a crutch for somebody. Um, you know, I always want to be, I always want to be kind of look at the, as the doctor and not the crutch. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, attack the surface issue. I want to, you know, give you, give you where, where the root cause is, because what I, what I ended up seeing was a lot of people who would use my services. I mean, I've been able to help a thousand families with credit repair. Uh, we've been able to finance over $40 million uh, for, for different clients. So, you know, we have a, a big operation, but from a, from a very small place, it's like, we still, you know, I'm still from Flint, Michigan. You know, I still treat everybody with respect. Like I, it, it's, it's like, I mean, it's, it's no point in being, you know, like, I can't be anybody who I'm not. So one of the things I, I always always understood was as you continue in a scale with this process, as you continue in a scale with um, your, your credit journey, like you're going to run into a lot of different individuals and you're going to have a lot of different, um, you know, people are going to tell you a lot of different things, but it's, it's best to kind of stay on your on your solid ground. So going into the personal credit, you know, after you build a personal credit up, you want to build that business credit. Now, a lot of people never even heard of a paydex score. Um, and Paydex is simply the business side of the, of the credit score. You know, you have your FICO score and you had a Paydex score. So the reason that the Paydex score is important to get built out, and I'm just going to go over this real quick, um, is because a lot of business owners um, don't look at their credit as an asset. If people chase um, their credit like they chase relationships, like they chase the business, like they chase the, the new car that they wanted, um, they will have a lot more 
leverage and it would be a lot more streamlined relationship because what people don't understand is if you built the credit up the right way then you could do whatever business that you want to do in, in the right proper fashion like i had a mentor always tell me um you know he always said uh if you if you meet somebody with a lot of money you know ask them about their time but if you meet somebody with a lot of time you know ask them about their money but if you meet somebody who have both you know sit back and take notes and that's kind of what i saw with the with the leverage situation the people who i knew who had the time freedom and also had the structure they also were able to hire employees what are some of the things that funding help you do that the average person can think about if we both started a business and we both had 10k and i had it in credit and you had it in cash right you know, what is the leverage that the person with credit has? Well, one, they're using OPM. Have you ever wanted to use all your 10,000 if that was your last 10,000? Like, you know, it's, it's a difference in the mindset. You know, if I, I'm not saying I'm just going to spend your spend OPM, you know, I'm not without recourse, but understand it's a lot more freely. It's coming out, coming off one of my credit cards or one of my, you know, that, as opposed to my hard cash. I always tell somebody like, you know, when you think about it, your life savings. Some people are like risking their life savings on certain investments when they could use their, their, their cash to fund their credit to now go back and fund their dream as opposed to, you know, going all in because it's dangerous to go all in. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like I can I can successfully say that, you know, I, I've made it from the from the corporate side, but I didn't jump. I, I didn't jump out the parachute, jump out. the, You know, like I, I literally I, I mapped out my I mapped out my exit. And one of one of the exit traits that I, I definitely tell a lot of people is you can borrow 100K a lot quicker than you can earn it. I mean, think about it. Some people have been working. I, you know, my dad, he heard me say this and I was just saying, like, I, I know people who've been working for 20 years and haven't accumulated hundred thousand dollars. And this is a 401k cash accounts. I mean, even the house in certain instances, um, it, it's very hard to do. But then also, if you actually had a plan and mapped out a, a plan, you could literally borrow hundred K in 12 months. Um, you could borrow hundred K and less. But you see where I'm saying is like if you continue to follow the same habits over and over and over and over, you're going to get the same results. Because I mean, think about it. In one year, you said, I could have fixed my credit this year and borrowed 100K. But you say, you know what? I'm just going to try to work hard and grind it out. And then you go up through another year where you work hard and grind it out and you realize you're not any closer to the 100K than when you started the year when you realize you could have just took a step back to build your credit. And that's kind of like with me in, in the program. I just realized a lot of people were leaning on the credit. They would go get the credit, get the credit repair, they listen to the steps. We go get the credit cards. And then next thing I know, they're calling me and saying, hey, man, um, can you do that again? And I'm like, well, do what? Well, do what is they went and ran up to thirty thousand dollars in credit cards with, you know, and, and, and guess who felt, who felt like it's my fault? And why, you know, why I take personal responsibility? Because, you know, they didn't have access to this capital before. Yeah. So it's like I was their gift and the curse. I was a double edged sword. And the reason I felt more of a, a responsibility is because I knew how important it was when they got it for them to do right by it. But sometimes you can't tell people what to do with their own stuff. So coming coming back, you know, tenfold for me was, OK, I need to create a course where or I need to, and not necessarily a course, but I need to create a community where at the end of the day, I mean, what you you know, if you say I didn't know that that's not true you know we want to we want to create a place where you people can be held accountable and really understand and not you know i mean not not leverage from one side and then fall back onto another one you know it's like you want to make sure we continue on a, on a constant growth and i just feel like you know a lot of people feel like okay i just need my credit fix uh, that's that's not true um you know actually you need your credit rebuilt you need your credit fixed and then you need to know where to go next and then you need to know why not to go to the places that your your uncle told you and your cousin told you and not because they're not right and they don't have these things but they can't tell you why they can just tell you it worked and that's another thing in the finance space where a lot of times you know we'll see you know we'll see approved 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 and this is and not necessarily know that that might not be the best approval um, and if you were going through, you know, a, a different process, you may have found a different way to get it because you got to understand everybody on this side of the fence is trying to get a percentage, trying to get a point, trying to get something. So where they say you might not be the best place for you. So one of the things I like to do is give you places so you can go make your own best due diligence. You know, you call these places, you deal with these lenders individually and you find out they're a good fit, because honestly, that's the only difference between, you know, you 
being able to understand your business and, and continue to scale it? And, uh, or, or are you just kind of sitting on your fingers thinking about, do I need to let somebody invest with me and get an equity partner? Like all these things come in, come into place when you don't have the, the financial literacy. So for me, that's definitely one of the things that I, I, I love to stand on. One of the things me and Keith have connected on and, um, you know, any questions that, that you have for me, you know, I love to love to answer it. I love to go into a little, little bit deeper in some of the places that you can go for some of those that are prepared and have good credit as well. So, um, yeah, yeah any, any, any questions? Well, Carrie asks, uh, what is OPM? Explain that to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So OPM is other people's money, which is that's what we want to use. We want to make sure we leverage in other people's money by by being strategic um you know like at the end of the day like i was saying with the borrowing we want to make sure we, we we know how to get the opm and then we want to make sure not just we get the capital but we get it at the best rate you know because um like i'll give you an example i had a business owner who came to me and he said he almost went out of business because he took a loan and i was like well, what was wrong with the loan and he was like well you know it was thirty thousand dollar loan over six months and they wanted a hundred dollars a day i said oh you know, like, well, well, why'd you sign up for that? Well, because they said they was going to give me the money in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So now, in essence, who doesn't want money in 24 hours? You know, you want to raise your hand and say that everybody wants the money in 24 hours, but at what expense? See, because what happens is some, some of the money that we sign up for is not necessarily the best money. And I can kind of give you an example is where I kind of teach some more, more bigger business owners who don't believe in credit cards or they don't believe in certain stuff. I'm like, look, we can take you over here and get you a $50,000 loan at 30% and you need it right now. Or we can take you over here and with the credit cards and you're able to get, you know, 50 to 75,000 and you have 0% interest for the next 15 months. And then I can show you how to liquidate these credit cards so you can use them like cash um, as opposed to, you know, feeling like it's just plastic in your pocket. So it, it's so many different ways that we can continue to leverage, um, you know, in, in whatever business we have. Because like I said, finance, it, it crosses over every business, you know, regardless of what you do, you're going to have to have capital. And if you don't have capital, you're always going to get to a point you can never outgrow it how much you can borrow, you know, but you can't outgrow how much you can make because how you can, you can get to a point where you can't continue to scale because there's no more capital out. But when you scale with credit, what you do is you give the bank the ability to see data points. You, you give the bank the ability to see that you're able to handle the money. And the more that they're able to see this, you know, it's almost like different spending. Like I, I give people example, and you know, not that, but like I, I don't, I don't even use a, a credit card. I mean, a debit card it's, it's all credit. I go through them. And the reason that I do is because, you know, you just have to understand the process of, of, of using the credit, because the more the more you use the credit, the more the bank sees, the more the bank sees, the more they want to give you. And the more they want to give you, you know, the more capital you have to do with, you know, what you please, um, whether it be in the real estate space, back back into assisted living, whether you have whether you just want to remodel your kitchen. Now, I do highly, highly uh suggest you use the uh, capital for and, and leveraging it. Like, look at it like this. You want to treat yourself. Don't, don't have all this capital and you're just hoarding it, but you don't want to understand. You don't want to rack up a whole bunch of consumer debt with credit. The whole purpose of this credit is to get, you know, like I said, it's your passive gateway. It, it's literally the gateway to everything that you really, I, I always, I always give people this example. It's, if you see a person with $100,000 with bad credit and a person with $50,000 with good credit, you won't be able to tell the difference in their lifestyles, right? It, it's because the person with $100,000, they have more buying power, but they're paying high, higher interest for everything. The person with $50,000 credit, they're walking in with no down payment. You know, they're turning the lights on with no payment. They're, they're getting the, the house with no down payment. So they have more money in their pocket and they have lower rates. Um, oh, and I, and I apologize. I, I'll finish the finished. Uh, so yeah, so optimize personal credit, build business credit. Number three is get funding. And then it's, um, you know, buy passive investments or purchase assets that produce cash flow. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about, uh, you know, finding investments that, you know, outperform inflation. Because as we see what's going on right now, it, that that's that, that's not stopping. So inflation is going to continue to go up. So 
with us with investments, we have to continue to be smart. We can't like, look, we no longer can put money in the subpar investments. We, that's why we can't risk our capital, especially OPM, because this might be the last time we get it for, for if we do wrong by it. So we have to make sure we're putting this in the right place. Uh, we're doing doing the best by it and, and we're making sure we take care of it so we can use even more. Okay, let me ask you a question. Just to recap, step one, optimize personal credit. Yeah. Step two, and when you say optimize personal credit, I have someone just ask the question, what is the minimum that you need in order to start accessing credit? So good question. So, so you, the minimum, the minimum is, let me, let me give you a better, a better answer. So Thanks. six, a 680, 680 credit score. That, that, that's a good barrier for a good for a good credit. But, you know, we just talked about, you know, people in different places. I mean, you can get a, you can get, get credit at 500s. I mean, that's the whole point of rebuilding. A lot of people aren't at the 680. They aren't at 700. So they're at the 500s and they're at the 400s and they're thinking, well, he's not talking to me, but but I am. So optimizing your personal credit at, at the 400 and the 500 level, level is finding secure cards, right? Uh, finding secure cards that can allow you to grow your personal credit, they can they can help you grow. And I'll give you an example um, of some of the ones that you want to get. You want to look for secure write cards. This down, hold up, write this down, please. Y'all get your pen and paper out. Write this down. We've got a master in front of us, so please take notes. No, absolutely. So uh, just going back to it. So, so Capital One, right? So the reason that we want to go that we want to go to Capital One and we want to get a Capital One card is because not because Capital One is the best bank, but they are a great bank to have after you get out of your rebuild stage. Um, but also because they have a credit card that graduates in six months. And what does graduating mean on a secure card? So graduate, let's say, let's give you an example. Let's say you put 500 down on a Capital One secure card. So what does that mean? I mean, you gave them cash and they gave you your same cash back on a credit card, but you secured it with your money because you might not have been able to be qualified for it with your credit score. So what happens after they unsecure it is let's say in six months, Capital One unsecures your credit card. That means they give you your $500 back and now they give you approval for, you know, it could be $2,000. So you see what well, your five hundred dollars and doing right by that credit card for the, for six months allows you to get an extra two K. And then it allows you to get an unsecured card where you're able to get, you know, even more things. Um, another secure card that graduates in six months is Navy Federal. I know everybody might not be in Navy Federal, but it's one of those secure cards that and Navy Federal is just one of those banks. If you're in Navy Federal. And I, I could we could we could talk for a whole hour um, because they're really a given bank. And, but it's really knowing how to optimize Navy Federal because Navy Federal is giving it to you, but they're not just telling you how to get it. So um, one of the things with Navy, uh, and I'll just kind of give this, okay, I see somebody, Navy gave me 25K. Great. So when Navy gave you 25K, was that on a personal credit card? Personal credit card, I think it's, okay, great, great. So another way to continue to optimize Navy is, well, Navy has what they call a 91.3 rule. Right. So that means every 91 days or every three billing cycles, you can ask for a credit limit increase. Every 91 days or every three billing cycles. So you have to make sure. See, the reason why you need to keep up with stuff like this is because you can do this from your from your app, from your app. You can literally go into your app, ask for a limit increase every 91 days or um, every three billing cycles with no hard inquiry checks. See, that's the other part. But if you call in and you ask for a late inquiry, they'll, they'll ding you with the inquiry. But you can call in and just ask them how to do it online and that doesn't count. So that's one of the things too. Another hack with Navy Federal, let me just kind of give you one because I see a few people have it. Um, so Navy Federal has what they call it. What you just said, they don't, if you go in on the app. Yeah. See, I ain't even know that y'all. Yeah, no, say, that, no. say that again. Yeah, so you apply on Navy Federal's app so you can avoid the hard inquiry pool because, you know, we don't want more hard inquiries before we go apply for more capital. And it's another way to just continue to scale. Um, and also, if you had a flagship card, Navy Federal flagship card goes up to 80000 right? Navy, Navy Federal platinum card goes up to 50000 The green card goes up to 50000 Now, granted, Navy will let you get eighty across all plat all all the credit cards, but you can get it in different ways. You can get 40 here, 20 here, 20 here. Um, you can get 80 on a flagship by yourself. Um, but those are the different different ways 
But another way to um, actually optimize with Navy just, just specifically is they have something called, um, so it, they are for the military, but they also work with people like if you have a relative that works for the Department of Justice, um, it, it's, it's, it's other hacks or other ways to kind of kind of get in Navy. Um, also, I mean, if you know somebody in the military, they can sponsor you. That's kind of what it's called with Navy. Um, but one of the things that they that, that you can have is Navy has what's called a pledge loan. So I want to just kind of give you this. Um, oh, you know. please touch that. All right. So let's 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 give you an example. And this is this is Navy giving you an opportunity to to utilize their products to help yourself. But you have to know how to how to help you. Right. So Navy has what's called a pledge loan. So this this simply put is you adding money to your savings account with Navy Federal. And also another another write, write this down too. If you have a Navy Federal account, upgrade to the flagship checking or the flagship savings. Is it a higher, is it a higher tier account? Yes. Would, would they charge you $15? Yes. But like you said, $15, as Carrie say, it's worth 25K. Or as Makisha said, it's worth 31K, you know, going up, going up, and then also going up on the tiers. Let's say you got the 31K and you don't have a flagship checking. Well, let's just say it's, it, it goes higher. You know, it goes higher, but Navy loves to see data points spread out. So you can't just do one thing with Navy and feel like Navy. Navy want to be like, Navy want to wrap you up like the web. So if you wanted to get away from them, you would have to unhook too many things. Direct deposit is another way to increase to get these high limits, you know, to, and, and you know, I, I'm privy to getting, you know, like the 60, when you get when to get the 60 and you need to put the direct deposit. And you put the direct deposit, you want to get the flagship check-in, and you also want to do one pledge loan. And why I say one pledge loan is all it takes is, let me, let me kind of go through this. So pledge loan is simply you putting money in the savings account and you're pledging it to Navy. So Navy has the ability to give you one, three, five, seven-year term loan on this money. So let's say you had 50K sitting in your, in another account, and you brought and you brought it to Navy and you pledged it and you put it up onto a, a, safe, a secure or I'm sorry, put it into the savings account. Navy secures your money for 30 days, 30 days. So they put your money on hold. The 50K gets put on hold for 30 days. And guess what they do? They give it back to you. But on your credit report, it shows a $50,000 a $50, loan open. So the next part, the next part of that is you take that because remember, you gave them 50,000. They held it for 30 days. They gave it back. So you got all of your money. Then you take that 48, 40, between 45 and 48,000 and you pay it back to Navy again. You put it back in your secure, in your secure or in your safety, I mean, sorry, in your savings account. So again, Navy holds your money for 30 days and does what? Gives it back to you. So now you have your whole $50,000 back. And you have a fifty thousand dollar personal loan showing on your credit on your on your credit report, forty eight thousand dollars paid off. So this this loan is looking like you got ninety four percent paid off. Most people's car don't cost fifty k. So just imagine you having this personal loan almost paid off. What it leverages you to, the ability to do, the ability to get to get it, you know, get the, get the vehicle, the ability to leverage the business credit because now the business credit see the personal you you able to handle a fifty k loan over here like that. But really, we just manufactured this. You know, we didn't even handle it. We we put this together, and now and, and let me let me let me kind of finish that too. So you want you want to know? So I still owe something. Yes, you do still owe. So remember, it's a it's a push pull thing. So Navy can't give you this without making anything. So they they're making three to five percent on whatever you don't pay back right away. So I can give you an example. So let's say you owe two thousand on it over seven years. I mean, your payments are like fifteen dollars. What is Navy getting extra? Four bucks, three three dollars. Every time you every time you pay 15, they hold it for 30 days and they give it back to you. They keep the four dollars. So it's literally I mean, for what it's worth, it's, it's not it's not even a um, do that. Do you know if we can do an express trust? Uh, when you say express trust, are you talking, what are you what are you referring to? The minimum on a pledge loan is five hundred dollars. But, you know, like I said, a trust account. OK. Do, you, do I recommend a trust account? Are, are you talking about like an actual like a living trust or a swift through, Pat? There's several different trusts. 
So, Makisha, can you come off uh, mute and just uh, ask the question that way? Yes. Uh, so, an irrevocable trust. I know um, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all of them will do a evocable trust. And I want it to be with Navy Federal because they do have so many perks. But I don't know. I haven't talked to them yet about whether they have something like that in play. The bigger ones, Chase, Bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Sunkiss, and someone else does. Right, they I do see. express trades. Gotcha. Well, I, I, I don't necessarily recommend it. It just kind of depends on where you're trying to go with your business. If you have, are you trying to, you know, if you're trying to set up something in that trust, I mean, maybe, but I think, well, and, and in me personally, I will, I will set up my trust account with, you know, absent of the bank, you know, because they, they're the ones I'm trying to keep my money from. So I don't really want them to have uh, access to it um, or, or, or with their setup. But yeah, you can you you can use a trust with uh, you can use a trust through Navy. I mean, I know people with trust accounts. Um, it's just that I, it just it, it's a reason, you know, those people have real estate trusts, you know, so it's a reason they have it as opposed to, um, you know, just just some of the just some of the ways I can spit out, you know, so I, I don't, I have to know what, what the, what the end goal is and I could probably give you a better answer. Gotcha. And it's called no taxes. That's, that's. Oh yeah. I, well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, all my <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, I do have, I, I do have people who, uh, who lawyers who write up trust and everything like that, where, yeah, I, I could see that, that absolutely being beneficial. Um, but as far as like, just through the credit process, I wouldn't really get too much um, into the trust because before you even go, like like say own nothing, control everything, before you take yourself off everything, you want to make sure you have as much business credit as possible. You want to have as much reporting to that EIN as possible too. So, you know, like when you, because like I, I'll give you an example, uh, you know, I have a, my, my business name is actually Solomon Lacey III, but I'm, I don't, I'm not on the business. So I'm not on the secretary of state. I'm not, I'm not on the business, but I do own the business. Oh, I do control it. Um, but I don't necessarily, you know, own it, own it, own it per se. Now that's another lesson all by itself. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said, that's why I, I didn't want to, that, that's, a, that's a tough so question. You almost <laughs> went down a rabbit hole right there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's a business all by itself. All right, so um, I got somebody got some another question. Let me see. Let me try to go back up and uh, get to this real quick, and then we're gonna bring Phil on. Phil, are you still there, my man? Still in the building, man. Still in the building. All right, good, good. Phil is a DJ, y'all. He's at the radio station. <laughs> uh, all right, hold one second. Uh, okay, so Renee, Renee, come on off off mute, Renee. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. What was your question? Well, I have uh, issues. I'm in bankruptcy, and I have a couple foreclosures on my credit report. Just wondering how how can your company help my situation? Yeah, so I mean, we definitely have uh, some bankruptcy bankruptcy uh, letters and uh, things of that nature. Where we could help you uh, facilitate that. Um, as well as the foreclosures. Okay, because I'm I'm really uh, in need of uh, paying off of a bridge loan, a, a hard money loan that I got before mm. I filed bankruptcy, but now I can't get any, um, you know, financing. I really need to take care of this uh, interest only real estate loan. Right. Um. Yeah. That that would be something we definitely can dis discuss. Uh, you just will have to kind of see a little bit more of your your profile, but yeah, we, we definitely deal with bankruptcies, foreclosures. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm still in the bankruptcy. It is not discharged or anything. I'm only like two and a half years in. Right, that's fine. Oh, all right then. Thank you so much. So, as, to, uh, as long as long as it's on your credit report, then then we can we can we can deal with it. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. I downloaded the Navy um, Federal app. So, and another person did ask. It appears you, it almost seems like you have to be in the military to open an account, but that's not true, correct? So you don't have to be in the military, but you do have to have a, a way in. Um, family member. Family member. Um, 
even if you don't have the family members information, you know, sometimes you can definitely uh, you, you can still get in. Remember, they're not they're not like the gate. They're not the gatekeeper. They're not trying to tell you, you know, if you can get in or not. They're just obviously doing their job. But sometimes they're not as is sticky where you can kind of kind of slide in just from, from talking to them. But I mean, ultimately, you do want to have somebody that can sponsor you in, um, have a family member, maybe in the military. Um, and I always say kind of go with somebody that, that you know, because you don't uh, want them to ask you any questions down the line and you don't know that person. So you can't get the information from them. OK, so but the, the family member has to be a member of um, Navy Federal or they just have to be a military member. They they have to be a military member. They it, it will it would it would be better if they were with, were with Navy. Um, and then you know that military person already has the you know as, as somebody said that DD two fourteen. As long as you have that information or that number for them, then you would be able to. Well, they would be able to get in, and then they would be able to sponsor you in. Okay, thank you. But but, but yeah, um, this this is, this is another piece though. If you can tell them, and I just don't like to like go over the hacks. You know, I know you recorded and stuff, but <laughs> some of the stuff like this is like I mean. Of course, you go in the Navy and you tell them, hey, I got a family member in the military. Yeah, I ain't wish it, but look, they passed away. I don't I don't have the information. I would call my mom every time. I've literally heard people, you know, they, they go through their spiel. I call my mom and this makes her sad. And, uh, you know, they're like, oh, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. We, we'll just push you through. But that, that's one of like a workaround as opposed to if you know somebody, all you have to do is get sponsored. Um, and I, if you, I'm a member. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I didn't, uh, I'll try to get in because I was an employee at the Department of Veteran Affairs, but they didn't recognize that even as a federal employee, they didn't care. But until I told them that my grandfather was a veteran, they told me even if he was not a member, they didn't care. As long as I can produce his DD-214, they still would take me as a member. But um, I got in and he, it, he's, all he is is a veteran and we just produced the DD-214 and they let me in. So did, so did they actually make you produce it? You got to produce the DD-214, but everybody's situation is different, like right, you right, said. Right. Yeah, yeah, no. But that's, that's, that's good that you had it. That's good that you had it, for sure. Um, but yeah, did, did anybody else have any uh, questions? I mean, like maybe it's just one of the institutions um, that's, that, that's very given, um, but I've seen some people who had it, so I just wanted to go, go over a couple of things that, um, you know, they, that you can definitely benefit from, because you know, adding these pledge loans, adding the secure card, I, I even <clears> give, you one, give you one more with Navy Federal, uh, one of the ways that, uh, you know, a lot of people are able to get some of those high limits with low credit scores is because they're applying at, you know, at night, you know, they're applying between the hours of 12 a.m. and 4.30. Um, hold, and on, reason- hold on, y'all, y'all better catch this. <laughs> Say that again, Solo. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, y'all so like- <laughs> Y'all sleeping on this one. What What's the best time to apply? Yeah, when when they sleep, now. Nah, so, but but obviously when when the when the finance department is down, you know, uh, all banks don't have uh, a, a automa- automated system when they close. They they running it just like the daytime, and obviously a huge bank, Bank of America, they got you know overseas. It, it's never shut down. But Navy between this time, they're shut down. And I've, I've seen people um, literally with. Five, you know, 500 credit scores go in there and apply for Navy. And then the other thing is you can actually pre-qualify before you even test the waters. So if it's 12 a.m. and you pre-qualify and you see 10K, you better, you know, take that approval, um, especially if you're not qualified, if you're not as qualified. If you are qualified, you can apply at different times of the day. But look at it like this. If they're going to bless somebody who's not qualified, why not you take the good credit score to the nighttime and, you know, just set your alarm clock for 1230? I mean, you I mean, ultimately, you already know you're going to get approved. Navy pulls TransUnion. You got 730, 740 TransUnion. It looks good. You got products with Navy Federal. Definitely set the alarm call them and not no, sorry not call them apply online and, and pre-qualify pre-qualify first just to make sure um you know it, it's it's still open uh well make pre-qualify and you can pre-qualify and and then not be you know and they decline you and you still apply and get it so one of those things about the late night thing is you know just just kind of see it through and if you don't and if it and if you don't get approved if you don't get approved um Look, look at the secure card, look at doing the um, pledge loan, look at, you know, look at adding the, the uh, direct deposit because, you know, just those three things right there will change the next, the next time you apply. Um, but make sure you apply after the night, the 90 days. Hi. 
Oh, uh, yes. Hi, uh, my name is Journey. I wanted to know. Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for all this great information. Um, I always think that information is the biggest commodity. <laughs> um, so I wanted to know what's the lowest credit score you can have in order to really start, you know, in order to really be in a great position. To be in a great position. Um, yeah, because I'm currently at a 750, but I'm still feeling kind of insecure because, you know, we have to go all the way to 850 or closer to 850. I know 750 is good, but I'm not sure, you know, where that places me. Oh, no, you're, uh, you, you're amazing. So so once again, when you see after you over 740, it's no, it's, you know, you can't go any higher as far as the bank looking at it is uh uh, assuring now if you got 800 you know you got that no question credit um but you have to look at it like this at 750 you're right there too they're not gonna ask you no questions either because i mean at the end of the day um at 750 oh and i, I will say this let me let me say this too all 750s aren't built the same so you could have a 750 um, some people could have 750 who are like we were talking about who are 18 years old 19 years old because they have a, a au trade line or their mother's trade line or something that's boosting their credit but their own primaries the, their own credit that they build isn't isn't as strong so if that 750 is six you know I mean, I, and like let's say it, it kind of just depends on uh, the thickness of your file so do you have other revolving credit cards um, do you have your utilization, you know, is your utilization kind of stand up under the 30% range? Just kind of yeah. small. Yeah, because yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, you're absolutely right, because I've been researching this for a while. So actually, the 30% 30 per, 30 under 30 is OK, but really, you need to keep it under, you know, under 20, under 15. Yeah, and, and that's under, what I'm trying under, to keep it under. Right. right. And, and under 10 when you're trying to get capital. But when you're not trying to get to capital, it's just kind of, you know, whatever you can uh you know, whatever you can, can, can muster. So if you have to get it up to 20%, but ultimately the, the whole, the whole point of having a 750, um, I would say to you is, is, is like, you've, you've achieved the, the gate, the gate to being locked. So like everything that you want to do moving forward, if you've established enough um, personal credit is on the business credit side. So you kind of, you kind of do yourself a disservice going after more personal cars when now you finally can you know, introduce yourself to the business side, because once you do, you'll see more frequent approvals, higher, higher approvals. And it's because of that 750 and the higher and, and look at it like this. When you when you start getting the business credit cards, I'm talking about 20, 30 K. I'm not talking about, you know, like you know, like myself, the 20, 30 K. Now you're using the 20, 30 K. You're transacting on the business side and what's going untouched and unused the personal credit. So now the 750 turns into the 780 without you having to do as much, because now you can take some of that debt off of there because now it doesn't have to stay on a personal. So it's not hurting your DTI anymore. So I think that's, that's the next step for you is um, the personal credit is great. It's, it's great, but I will switch over to, you know, start focusing on more of the business size and, and the different lenders that will, you know, they'll love you to see that 750 on, on their side. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And also I wanted to know that if you know how you said the, you know, how you piggy bank someone, that's not the word you use. I don't piggy, remember the term. Well, yeah, same thing. Piggy bank. And okay, yeah. Right. So what I wanted to know, I wanted to put my um, spouse on mine because he's building his, he's at a 640 now. Absolutely. So I would, I wanted to add him to my capital one, but I wanted, I've had like high, um, high, what, high Uses. balances. Right. Um, high usage. And I've managed to get it down. So I want to know, would that be beneficial to him? Because I've had that history, although I got it under control now. Yeah, no. So absolutely. And the only thing I always suggest when you get added to family cars is, you know, just ask them um, in general, is this their primary car? Because just like that Capital One car, you have 750 credit score. So you can you can get your usage a little high without it affecting your score. You still be well over the 700s. Somebody who doesn't have as strong a score when that usage gets up there is going to kind of tank their tank their score. But it doesn't, you know, AUs are temporary for the person that you're adding them. So, I mean, even if you did get your usage back high, you could easily call and ask Capital One to remove them until you got it back down. But, yeah, that would be uh, wonderful. I mean, because, you know, he gets a chance to benefit from the history um, without without actually uh, having the count um, or, I mean, you know, or if, if he does have a count, you'll both have the account in the same place. Perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. Excuse me. I have a question. Okay. All right. Do you guys um, offer 
shove corporations as well. Do you recommend someone starting the business funding through scratch or do you offer shove corporation and build it from there in order to receive funding? Good, good question. Um, so I, I do, I actually, I actually recommend um, building it from scratch. I actually recommend building it from the personal credit. You know, that's why optimizing the personal credit is first. I, I don't see, I don't see a workaround to the business credit uh, especially like getting high end cap, like high limits. I mean, I've, I've seen so many people try, try so many things, but it's like, if you have the optimized personal credit, you literally can, I mean, from, from Chase, I mean, like, like Amex, you know, you can, you can go to a lot of different institutions and, um, you know, leverage that. So I would say from a shelf corp, I've seen people purchase shelf corps, add, add a lot, you know, add some stuff to them and they not get funded. So that's, that's the only reason why I'm saying like, at least if you build out yours from scratch, um, everything that you have there, your own, you'll know that it's there. Um, you know, you'll be the one building that uh, history. You also be building that business bank account. I didn't really talk about this, but cause we didn't go too much in the business side, but always, you know, you're not in business until you open the business checking account. You know, a lot of people I know they they transact so much commingling through the personal that they don't even get credit for the amount of income they earn because they think it's in the personal is helping them. And I'll tell you this, even if you have a job right now, if you've decided to go up, come over to the entrepreneur side and start using um, you know, being in the business space, it serves you no, no purpose having money in your personal checking. Your business checking is, is ultimately now your next greatest asset, you know, the personal credit. The business account, because whatever you can show in that business checking account, the business, the you know, they're, they're, they're looking at and, and certain banks are willing to give you even more capital because you have a good sitting balance as opposed to what you transact through monthly. So that's just another way. Like if you got money, you know, a couple, 10, 20,000 sitting in the personal checking, like, yeah, that's cool. But that doesn't help you. I mean, maybe if you had a job and you didn't have any business account, but now that you have a business account, putting that 16K sitting over into the into your uh, business checking account really changes the, the approval amount. It changes the fact that the bank now knows that not only do you have cash, but you're showing it to them. And um, it just makes it for a lot easier lending, lending move. All right, let me ask, who was that? Uh, Mr. Ivory, you answered that question about the business, the shell court? No, this is Jean-Luc from Jean-Luc. Oh, John, Jean-Luc, hey man. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> all good, all good. All right. all right. So I have five shell corp. I just did another one. Um, I've gotten funding. So you got to know exactly what to do and how to do it. This is not a short game. This is not a McDonald's drive through process. It's a process. And you got to make sure all your ducks are lined up. Now, 20 years ago when I did it, it was so easy. But because so many people have gotten in the game, they don't raise the bar. They ain't playing no more. So there are certain things that you're going to have to do in order to get this stuff done. But you can't get the funding. It's just that stop listening to YouTube. There's a lot of noise out there, y'all. And I'm talking about they got on the bling bling. First of all, anytime you see somebody with the bling bling on YouTube, run. Because folks that wear, that has wealth do not wear it. That's a smart person. Folks that's wearing it, trying to attract you because you're gullible. All right? But yeah, it's, it can be done. And I, and I do take uh, my credit, business credit academy. Um, and we'll, we'll get to that point. All you got to do is just ask me and uh, I walk you through that process. All right. So anyway, thank you so much. Y'all thank Mr. Solomon Lacey. Um, time is running out. Um, Tracy said, pay your net 30. That Tracy, you are too sharp, girl. Right. <laughs> I miss you. I miss you. Um, so we're going to bring in the real estate portion. Phil, can you come in and share with us? Introduce yourself. You're probably on the radio right now. No, man, I'm not on the radio. How y'all doing out there? Um, first of all, man, I got to give it back up to uh, Trey. A wealth of knowledge, wealth of information. Um, I well, have you, man, y'all give us give him a thumbs up. You got to give it to him, man. Man, the man just dropped. Give him a thumbs up. Listen, 
But he dropped so much nuggets. I, I, he weighing me down. I can't even get up out my seat. You understand what I'm saying? So, so big ups to Tracy, man. Listen, man. Um, definitely, definitely, you dropped a lot of nuggets, and I appreciate it because I have a navy, and um, I just found out um, that you can you can apply for 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 for, for a credit card or after five and all that other stuff. And I'm sitting on the phone trying to find out how to get the uh the, what what you call it the um for the checking um. Mm -hmm. What's that, Tracy? Checking Solomon. Solomon Lake. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. What you say? The business checking. Yeah. Oh, for, uh, to the flagship. Oh, the, play, the pledge loan, pledge, the flagship account. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and apply for that right now. I'm Absolutely. sitting on the radio. I might as well do it. But <laughs> first of all, man, Solomon, you did an awesome, awesome, awesome job, man. And 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 to come to follow you is, is gonna be great. Um, because one thing I want to make sure I say is this. Um, I want to appreciate Keith. I'm going to be honest with you. I know I came in the game, with, you know, just like most of you guys um, wanted to open up a halfway house, came to Keith. Matter of fact, I, I went to Keith's house and I said that I called him because Keith and I know each other from Forex. So my yeah. wife and I from Forex. <laughs> and, 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 and now I don't even trade Forex no more. I, I got a computer robot that's trading Forex for me. So if anybody want that, that's 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 great right there because I ain't got time to be trying to figure out these numbers. I just let that thing do it. So that's another way you earn income. But um, I called Keith up, man, and I said, Keith, I ain't talked to Keith about two years, Keith. Right, and I, right. Man, three. three years. Yeah. And, and and I said, Keith, man, where are you? He said, I'm at home. I said, can I come by your house? And you can hear the hesitant on Keith's voice like, what does this man want? I ain't talked to him in three years. I ain't trying to buy nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, I got to Keith's house, I said, Keith, I just need five minutes. Tell me about this halfway house. And um, literally, man, uh, by, by the blessings of grace, um, I actually worked on getting the house. Uh, I actually got the house. Turn left on to the main road. Can you mute, the, mop, please. <laughs> mute your phone, please. I'm doing key, I'm doing I'm doing uh people that's coming into the um into our program now. I do a lot of their trainings. Um before I got into their training, I did the forex, so I took my money and I invested into real estate. So what I did was I did a lot of tax liens, tax uh tax fees and foreclosures. Um what what happened, and Solomon will, will, will know this, uh, um anybody that's invested into real estate knows that the hedge firms real estate invest, uh, real estate agents and um, hedge funds and other people are getting into the game now. I said, so you, you have to do a workaround um, to do this. I bought a lot of properties. Matter of fact, I'm paying all the taxes on the properties now and I'm sitting back like, wow, the, the time I bought the properties, I got it for a certain price that I'm now selling it back, getting triple, quadruple of the money for the property because I never wanted to get into the houses because I knew I wasn't trying to manage the houses. I just wanted land because uh, land, real estate sales. So um, I allowed myself to get into real estate and I started buying up a lot of lots, foreclosure tax deeds. And then I started learning the, the wholesale the wholesale deal. So now with this program, we work with the wholesale because I work with Step Up, um, uh, Step Up Group with Brandon. And um, so I deal with the foreclosure, I deal with the wholesales. But I still, if you need properties, I've reached out to a lot of real estate agents that are now looking for, um, that's giving away their property, selling their properties. So you guys have the opportunity to get their properties at at um, at uh, the ARV, um, the uh, after, after repair uh, cost. So you can get that property um, sent to you. I'll just connect you with the real estate agent and you can still get that. And a lot of times to fix up these properties is not a whole lot um, because there's three different levels when it comes to um, after repair the cost, and you know the the minor and the, the the minor one is very simple, paint fix up and stuff like that you could do yourself. So uh, I'm connect, I connected with a lot of real estate agents um, in different cities and different states that we could get properties. Um, also with Keith, his program. So um, a lot of stuff, man. Keith is like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, even with, with trust with trustees. I heard somebody ask about trust. And um, I literally reached out to a friend of mine to set up, my, to, to get the trust. So I know how to set up a trust um, with the bank. Um, so that's another thing. 
and it does protect you um, from tax benefits and stuff like that, pro-rate pro um, processes, things of that nature. And, um, and I love what Solomon did. He put his name and his business as a corporation. That's another, that's another thing that you could do. That's another nugget he threw out that you didn't see. Yeah, I didn't even hear that. You know, it's like, you know, you're still getting a check. And Philip Johnson. You can't go into that. That's a long one there. You see what I'm saying? You're still getting a check in your name, but it goes to the corporation corporation. So you see why CYA, you come in your behind at all times. So at the end of the day, um, we uh, with Keith, we got the programs, we got the things. We are working and working diligently to get whatever you need. And I'm a type of person I find everything. Ask Keith. Okay, uh, it wasn't even a, it wasn't even a business thing. Keith asked me to look for something for him, and I found it for him. And Keith was like, "How did you do it?" One thing about me, I'm a researcher. I know how to connect with people. I got a lot of connections, and Keith understand that. So, um, if you got any questions, comments, or concern, trust me. We can do the tax deeds, tax foreclosures, and stuff like that. It benefits. It benefits to the long haul. So you can do that as well. And that's awesome. my spiel. I don't, I don't want to take up too much time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Listen, y'all. Listen, tribe. It takes a village to raise a child. We going to take over, y'all. Let me get some thumbs up who all going with me to the million dollar level by the end of 2022. Please let me get some thumbs up, y'all. Put them thumbs up in the chat. Listen to me, y'all. I want everybody to ride with me, Phil, and Solo on this here. We're going to get the financial knowledge. We're going to get the information. We're not just helping other people find affordable housing we're also building generational wealth. We're helping the vulnerable population, population of people. Our veterans, they are trained to kill, but they're not even trained to live. Something wrong with that picture, y'all. Something wrong with that picture now. So we got to help those that are coming out of prison. Our brothers need to get restored back to the families. Our sisters and brothers that are out there trapped on drugs and alcohol, we are the solution. The way this economy is going today, the way the real estate market is going today, I want y'all to understand that housing is no longer affordable for the average Joe. It's no longer affordable. So when you start talking about people coming out of prison, coming out of jail, they ain't got no first lap. You know, I called a realtor the, uh, the other day for one of my students. And the man got a house in the hood, y'all. Listen to me, man. You walk in the door, the house leaning. I start rolling to the other side of the wall, y'all. Y'all ain't understand that. The house leaning. That man want $2,000 for that, 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 that house. But not only that, that more, man, he want good credit. It's in the hood now. He want good credit. And he want first, last, and security. That's $6,000 he want up front with a 720 credit score. I looked at him. I said, where are you going to get a 720 credit score in this neighborhood? I said, Negro, something wrong with you. And you know what he said? He said, I got three people coming today to look at it. I said, oh, my God. Came back two weeks later. It's still sitting there, y'all. Don't try me. I know this game too well. So I want y'all to get in position, y'all, because we got these HUD homes. If anybody want to know how to get in touch with Solomon Lacey, his program is called Leverage Over Everything. Leverage Over Everything. Y'all need to get with this brother, sign up with this brother, get this knowledge, join me, join him. I got some knowledge, but he he finna take me to another level. The man younger than me, okay? But I'm going to sit at his feet, okay? I'm going to sit at his feet like Martha did with Jesus. Say what you, you want to say, Mary. Go on about your business. I'm finna sit here and learn everything I can, okay? Leverage over everything. Please go to his website, look at his packages, join him. The man is awesome. And also with Phil, Phil is going to be doing the real estate uh, uh, program where he's going to help you guys acquire properties and all of that good stuff. 
uh, gifts, uh, um, uh, certificates and all of that, everything. We're going to do everything. But more than that, understand me, y'all. We are going to definitely get these pro uh, uh, um, uh, real estate firms in your local area for $1,000 because it's going up to 10. So y'all get in now. And that way you position yourself to get access to real estate property on the low. Okay. So y'all get in and make sure that y'all can, you know, get in a position that you can build wealth and be able to access property. I want to thank everybody. I'm going to pray us out um, like I normally do. Father, we thank you for this gracious opportunity to come before you today. We honor you, Father God, because you first thought about us. We know what heaven and earth will, fall, uh, will pass away, but your word will never fail. You said, oh God, that when we put our hands to the plow and don't look back, that we can inherit the kingdom. We know, Father God, that everything that we do is to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll talk to y'all soon. And the recording will be out and everybody will get this recording. Okay? Amen. But those, let me say this real quick. For those that are not elite, please sign up for the elite. I'm going to give you guys an opportunity where I'm going to save you some money if you sign up within 48 hours, okay? I'm going to give you an opportunity because you will be able to get access to all of this stuff, credit repair, credit restoration, removing of inquiries, all of that good stuff. Carrie, I got you, girl. I got you, okay? And everybody get access to all of this. Thank you all so much. Again, God bless you. Talk to you soon.